teach and, and, and maybe preach a little bit, but but I, I, I've, I've been thinking more about, we teach you a lot about tithes, offerings, the kingdom, as far as seed time and harvest and things like that. Sometimes we fail to articulate how to receive from God, how to, how to reap a harvest, you know? And the Lord started talking to me about this. He, I've been studying it for years, and, uh, but this morning he was really talking to me about it. And so the title to this today is Don't Miss Your Harvest. Don't miss your harvest. Can you say amen? amen. Don't miss your harvest. Well, we're going to get into some things, and it's going to go into a couple different areas here, not just with finances and things like that. <clears throat> but I'll say this as far as uh, the kingdom goes. Uh, he said, where your treasure is, there your heart will be. A lot of times the test is the, is the, is the money, is the things uh, a lot of times that's where God tests you because he said you can't serve God and mammon you have to choose one and he didn't give three examples he gave two he gave him he gave God and then he gave mammon which is deceitful riches and you know and things like that he didn't say that money was evil he said the love of it was so a lot of times the test when you're when you're walking in in kingdom uh, principles and when you're you know following Jesus Christ and uh, a lot of times the test will be acts of obedience and money and things like that so I want you to go to Mark chapter 4 verse 23 through 29 <clears throat> but this is don't miss your harvest thank God that I'm saved today Amen. I'm fighting the fight of faith. I am the heel today. I am the heel today. Amen. He said, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Resist him. Don't give in. Resist him. How do you resist him? You stand against it. You confess the truth. Don't come into agreement with what's trying to come against you or your family. You come into agreement with only what the Word of God says. That's resisting. Resisting ain't giving in to it telling everybody what's... Even though we acknowledge things that are happening, but at the same time we need the truth that sets you free. We need something to fight with, and you can only fight from a place of truth, right? So, amen. So, Mark chapter 4, verse 23, he says this right here. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Say, I have ears to hear. So, I want to pray, Father, we thank you. For this opportunity to be in your house. We thank you for those that are online. We thank you for those that are here. And God, I ask you to open the eyes of our understanding today. That we may know what is the hope of your calling today. I need you more than I've ever needed you right now at this moment. God, I pray and just thank you for your anointing. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your word. We thank you, God. I ask you to open up the hearts to receive. God, let me be rightly divided in context and setting today. Lord, make it simple as a child can understand it. Father, I submit to you, to the Holy Ghost today, uh, in Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. and amen. So if he, he said, if any have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto them, take heed what you hear. With what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. Really, if you want to break that down, you could, you, could, you could say, take heed what you hear or how you hear. The measure that you meet, what the measure of time and study and things like that you, that you put into what you hear. Uh, has a difference in what you is measured to you, right? If you seek, you'll find. If you knock, it'll be opened unto you. Like Pastor Jody was saying this morning, I don't know about you, but I'm so hungry for the kingdom of God, I can't live without more of Him. Amen? And what, what do you mean there, Pastor? We're talking about relationship with God. Yeah, relationship with Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. Absolutely, 100%. But what about your life here? What about your life now? What is your purpose? What is your... And I want to say this about purpose... And destiny. Because your purpose, as, as Pastor Ron had said, your purpose is discovered. You discover your purpose along the way. Usually you're not born with a, with a thing that says, hey, here's your purpose. You know, when you come out and it's on the, you know, they put the toe tags on the babies, you know, or whatever it is to see, 
Not the dead ones. I'm saying they put the names on the thing or whatever it is or the little, little thing on there. You know, it usually don't come out and say, well, your purpose is to be a singer. Your purpose is to be a preacher. Your purpose is to be a, uh, you know, a construction worker, a police officer. You know, you usually don't get an instruction. And you really, literally can't really get into the Word of God and, and, and find out what that is either. Now, we know we're children of God. We know we're the body of Christ, right? We understand that much because the Bible says it. We understand we're sons and daughters of God if you're born again, Right? We understand that, but he don't tell you, okay, as a son, where, where am I to be planted? What, what, what place am I to be planted at? What, what occupation do I do in this planet? Who do I marry, right? So those things you have to discover. Those things you have to learn to be led. You have to learn to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost. You have to learn to hear from God. You have to learn to listen to God, right? Those things you discover. So why I'm talking about this is because we're talking about don't miss your harvest. A lot of times we sow, we teach that, we tithe, we give, we sow financially, we do all this, but we don't understand how to reap a harvest when it comes. A lot of times we don't even understand what a harvest looks like when it comes. And I'm going to share a couple examples with you and I'm going to try to stay on point here with you. Pastor, what does this have to do with, with anointing? What does this have to do with accomplishing God's will? Well, it has about everything to do with it. Because if you never get these principles here, if you never learn this part, he'll never trust you with the true riches of the kingdom. If you never learn these, these, these laws and these principles of seed time and harvest, he said as long as the earth remains, there's seed time and there's harvest. Are you hearing me? If you never learn these principles, if you never learn, you'll never, he'll never release to you the, the, the true riches, which is his knowledge, which is his wisdom, which is his favor, which is his, himself, which is more relationship, to know him more. Those things that really matter. Okay? So, and he said unto them, Take heed what you hear. Okay? For he that hath, to him shall be given. From he that hath not, from him shall be taken away even that he has. End of it, verse 25. Verse 26 he said, And he said, So is the kingdom of God if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep, rise, night and day, follow this right here, 27, night and day, and the seed should spring forth and grow up, and he knoweth not how. Now he's saying the kingdom of God, watch this, he's relating this to the kingdom of God. As if a man should cast seed into the ground. Now I want to say something about the ground. The right kind of soil, I don't care what kind of seed you got. You could have a cucumber seed. You could have any kind of seed. Tomato seed. You could have. You could have any kind of seed. Uh, we just planted some pepper seeds. We got. We got jalapeno seeds. They give off too. If the soil is right and good and rich in nutrients, doesn't matter what kind of seed you put in it. It's going to grow. It. Am I right? Because why? Because the soil is going to do what it's created to do, and that is to grow the seed. Produce the crop. Produce what's been planted. It doesn't have the ability to say, well, that's a pumpkin seed. We're not going to produce that one today. It doesn't have the ability. Oh, that's good. The, the soil doesn't have the ability to choose what it grows. The only, oh, that's good. The only thing it is created to do is to grow whatever is put in it. It don't have a mind like we have. So when Jesus taught about the kingdom, he always went to natural things, right? Because we understand we live in a natural world, yet the, the are you hearing me? Yet the kingdom is in a supernatural realm that we can't see. He said the kingdom would be within you. So how does the connection between heaven and earth, how does that how does that, how does, where's that gap? How do I walk as a, as, a, as a man of God or as a woman of God or as a child of God? How do I walk and accomplish God's will and advance His kingdom here in this earth? How do I walk in God's supernatural provision for my life? Well, there's a way that you can walk in His supernatural provision there's a way that you can walk in His supernatural healing. All that's a part of the kingdom. 
Jesus said that he has redeemed you. What does that mean? Bought you back. He bought you with a price. What was the price? His own body, his own self, his own blood. <clears throat> right? But it wasn't just to get you out of here to heaven. It was to get heaven into you. So you could accomplish something here and now. And you could win as many people and pull as many people out of the fire and into this kingdom that you could before you left here. But not only pulling them in, but discipling them. So he's relating here. I want to stay on this point here. So he's relating here the kingdom of God as if man should or, or as if a man, a man should cast seed into the ground. Remember, the soil is just gonna it's just gonna it's just gonna grow whatever you plant it. And guarantee it's gonna grow some weeds, it's gonna grow some all that. You're gonna have to pluck that stuff up. Why? Because seeds coming from everywhere. They're falling off a tree, their pollen's coming around. Plants are producing micro seeds. We went into a cave. This is to prove it. This is how, this is how seeds r really are. They're so mi microscopic that you can't see them, but you carry them every day. We went into the lost sea, which was down in this cave. There's no life that can grow there unless there's a light that can shine on there. Well, where they made this a tourist attraction, they put lights in there. So the lights for the people to walk down. So where the light shines, there's plants growing. And I asked that guy, I said, how in the world is that plant growing down here when there's no life nowhere else? He said, because people carry the seeds in on their clothes. I said, what? He said, yeah. He said, he said pollen, any, the seeds are so microscopic, they float through the air like grass seeds, weeds, stuff like that. I didn't know that until that moment. But he said they would attach to people's shoes and clothes, and then when they would come in, they would fall off, and they would go, and they, wherever they hit where there was light, they would grow a plant, whatever plant that that was. Right? When you look at what seed is in the kingdom, what is seed? What, what, I mean, there's different, different. okay, let me, let me stay on point here. Let me stay on point here. So the soil is just going to create, it's just going to produce whatever you put in it. Right? So, now here's what we're talking about. Don't miss your harvest. In 27, he said, and you should, and should sleep, rise night and day, and the seed should spring forth and grow up. So the, the seed's going to spring forth and grow up. He knoweth not how. It's just growing. Because why? Because the soil is doing what it's created to do. Produce. It's created to, it's created to produce. Anybody getting this? So he don't know how, but it's growing. Now watch this. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. First the blade, then the ear. First the blade, then the ear. If you, if you know a stalk of corn, first the blade, then the ear. What then? Well, then the, uh, uh, the full, wait, hold on. The full corn in the ear. Planted the seed. It grows. The plant. What you're really wanting is the fruit. That's that, that's that corn cob with all those seeds on it. With all those. And it, you can eat that. You can plant that. You, that's what you can eat. That's what you're really after. But that one corn piece, I mean, you could take that off there and plant those. And I mean, you'd, you'd multiply it 30, 60, 100 fold, right? Because that's what it's created to do. So he said this, but he was relating this to the kingdom of God. So Jesus always taught. He, he taught to natural people that couldn't understand it, but he taught in a way that he knew that one day we would have the Holy Ghost, that we would be in this kingdom with him, we would be seated with him, and we'd be able to go back from a revelation standpoint where he could reveal the deeper truths to us, pull back the curtains and say, here it is, let me talk to you plainly. I'm not going to hide it from you no more. You've entered in, now let me give you a deeper truth. Let me, let me pull back this curtain so you can go deeper with me. This is what I've really been trying to get to you all along. If you could ever get past this place of mediocre or if you could get past this place of shallow ground and you'd seek first the kingdom again and my righteousness. He said, all these things I'll add to you. That's why, that's why she had reminded us that, you know, man, your desire, I love that. Pray, pray that for me too. I'm going to pray that, you know. I pray along those lines, but man, that was powerful. Pray that their desires would grow for Him, for Jesus, man, for the kingdom. Right? And, and right now we're getting a deeper truth right here. I'm going to get into it. I'm, I'm just talking to you just, just through these scriptures. But 
again, the, the, the title of this is Don't Miss Your Harvest. So when the, when the corn of the ear, what did he do? Look in verse 29. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately, say immediately, he puts in the sickle. Immediately when he sees that, brother Mike, when he sees that harvest, immediately he puts in the sickle and gets it. If he lets it stay too long, what happens? It rots. If you get it too early, it ain't fully mature. But at the right moment when that thing comes up, puts in the sickle, and now he's got food to eat, and not only that, but this, this plant's going to produce not only food to eat, but it's going to produce more seed to sow back into the ground to produce more crop. Seed time and harvest. As long as the earth remains, there'll be seed time and harvest. A lot of us, we declare Jesus to be provider, but we fail to obey God when He tells us, to, when He moves on us finan- to, to sow financially. But we want His financial blessings. We think it just comes. Let me, t- let me help you with something. It don't just come. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Well, I work three jobs, Pastor. Well, I, well that's good. You're going to get it. The sweat of your brow, you're going to get it. You should work. Three jobs, two. I, work, I, work, I had a guy tell me I work 100 hours a week. I said, I'm so sorry for you, buddy. Let me pray for you. That, that's called slaves. That's not work. That's slaving. Where's your time for your family? Well, let me say, where's your time for your God? Where's your time for your family, your wife? Where's your time for yourself? And the, the place that you're, 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 you're slaving for, where's that at? McDonald's? Or I'm just using this example. The, guy, the people that told me this was McDonald's. They work 100 hours a week. As a general manager, make good money. But so? What are you going to do with it? You're always in McDonald's. You're going to buy another burger? There you go, Pastor. Thank you. I'm trying to correct our, our, our thinking, but I, I, wanna, I, wanna, I just want to talk about this. Don't miss your harvest. And then I'm going to share some things that I declared in the harvest that came in. And I'm learning to be, you know, I'm learning to be more aware of it when it comes because sometimes it comes in a way that you don't think. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Sometimes it comes, that harvest will come in a way, it'll be packaged in something, but you don't know it, but that's God releasing the harvest to you. <clears throat> So he said as soon as that happens, that's when he takes in the sickle because the harvest has come. Say the harvest has come. come. A lot of you have been sowing and sowing and sowing, sowing into the anointing, sowing into the financial, sowing into the church and what God's doing, sowing into different things, whatever it is, ministries. And and, and you're waiting. But he said the harvest, don't miss it. Now there was something that would happen there. During that time when he, would, when he would cast seed into the ground, he should sleep day and night, and it, it would spring forth and grow up. He, you know, he had to tend to it. He had to fertilize it. He had to keep it real to him, keep it alive to him. In this sense, keep confessing what the, the truth says about it, what the Word of God says about it. It's God's will for me to prosper. It's God's will for me to, amen, to succeed in reaching and whatever he's called me and leading me to accomplish. Let me say that. Right? Where God leads, He provides. Okay? I want to share a testimony of a, of a place with disciple makers. We, you know, the, 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 the company that we've got that goes out. That it's a branch of the church. Let me say it's a disciple makers program. But these guys make money and uh, things like that. But teaching them life skills, uh, you know, and, you know, how, how to become a, a disciple of Jesus Christ out in the, the workforce, out in the marketplace. How to how to how to work in the anointing? How to how to how to operate the way God has you know is teaching us and has called us to to operate as far as ambassadors of Christ in, in a world that we necessarily don't belong to, but we're here temporarily, right? So so th- there's a lot to this and training people up in this and this anointing. And it's not something that happens overnight, okay? But I was on that job, and we, we had got, I hadn't shared this with many people, nobody, probably maybe my wife, but they had gave me a check 
and I'm responsible for paying all the guys, the insurances, and you know, overseeing all that. I got to make some money too because I can't be out there for nothing. And I get this check, and the and the Holy Ghost moves on me, and He said, "I want you to take and I want you to sow a thousand dollar seed to your man of God." And I said, "Hmm, okay, no problem." Now this is by faith because because I I still got a little ways to go before everything gets accomplished. So I said, "Okay, I'll do that." So I get a thousand dollar seed. I understand enough about financial seed and blessing my man of God. To, I understand the principles to that and the harvest that comes with it. You've come too late to try to teach me anything else. Way too late. Okay. So I did. I said, well, okay, I took it out of mine. And I was like, well, I'll make this. Okay, this. Okay, let me get that. I put that $1,000 seed. Me and my wife did. We, we sowed that seed into the ground to my man of God. Okay. Sowed that in there. And I uh, just believe God. I said, I said, God, I know. I don't understand it all, but I know there's going to be a release from heaven. I know there is. And I'm doing it because I love you. Mike Murdoch said this right here. Whatever you release, you have mastered. Whatever you hold on to has mastered you. <laughs> Woo! If that don't make you want to shout, I don't know what will. Are you hearing me? I'm, I'm giving Mike the credit here, Dr. Mike Murdoch. He said this. It's just funny. I run across this, this on, a, on, a, on a video. And it, it, it's funny because I'm ministering this this morning. And, and that's the first thing that he said. So, so at that moment when God moved on me with that $1,000 seed, <laughs> I had two choices. That was my money. Really, if you look at it, I'm a steward of what God gives me and it's really His. That's the way I look at it and I keep my mind frame in because whatever I declare to be mine, I take lordship over. That's the way I see scriptures and the way I believe it. So whatever I declare mine, that's, I'm lordship over it. I'm, I'm declared lord, lord of it. That's my wife. It is mine, but it's really God's child. That he's trusted to me as the man, as the husband. To love her like Christ loved the church. To protect her, to nurture her, to, to grow myself. Not to be a dictator and a controller and, 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 and beat down and all that. Right? Are you hearing me? So, I want to say that one more time. So I had a, I had a choice and I'm just using that one. I mean, I could go... I've been living this for years, so, so I'm not telling you just incidents. We live this way. This is a life that we live. We live this way. Every time I get, I'm like, Lord, what do you want me to do? I'm listening for the Holy Ghost. What do you want me to do? This is yours. Sometimes he'll just say, be blessed. Take your family somewhere. Do something. This is, food. This is bread for your food. This is, this is for you and your family. Be blessed. Thank you. Whatever you release... Listen, whatever you release, you have mastered. Whatever you hold on to has mastered you. Jesus said he come to set you free. He come to make you free. How do, we, how do you make me free, Lord? Well, I melt down at an altar one day. <laughs> Honey, let me help you with something. You might have started the walk when you got up from that altar. But I promise you, you went back out that door. You might have been free inside, but you still had the rest of your life and everything in it was still there. There's some things you had to start making a choice to change. God said I, 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 you'd know the truth. And then the truth, when you respond to it, act on it, speak it, would make you free. So there's some things you got a part to play. It ain't just kneel at an altar. I'm saved. Everything's good. I'm going to walk out there. I'm going to heaven. No, you started your walk. And now God's with you. He's forgiven you. But now He wants you to seek the kingdom. He wants you to seek more of Him and do it His way. So, again, whatever you release, you've mastered. Whatever you hold on to has mastered you. And I'm not going to be mastered by nothing except Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but as your pastor, I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to be mastered by anything except Jesus Christ. I'm going to submit to the authorities He's put in my life as unto Him. But I'm not going to be mastered by anything except Him. Are you hearing me? But I understand submission to authority too. 
to God's authority in my life. You don't have to go out here and submit to every pastor. You don't have to do that. You submit to your pastor. I don't go out here and submit to every, every man of God. I'm subject to them, but I'm not submitting. You don't submit to one another. You're subject to one another. You only submit to a higher authority that's coming under the mission, submission. You're subject one to another. I'm subject to you, but I'm not submissive to you. And you're not submissive to one another. You're subject to one another. Are you hearing me? <clears throat> so let's go to Genesis chapter... Or I want to say this. This is something I got by the Holy Ghost. Since we're on this. Acts of obedience in faith with financial seed in good soil will unlock more of heaven's financial supply. You say, Pastor, well, I'm not after no uh, financial supply. Well, why are you working 40 and 50 hours a week? Why are you going to school? Why are you going to college, uh, spending $30,000 in college? Why? To have more money, a better car, a better house. Be real. Well, no, I'm, I'm trying to make a difference. Okay. That's good. You should make a difference. But realistically, let's, 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 let's get realistic here, church, and, 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 think, and think rational and think, of, think, think where we're at, that we're, 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 we're serving in the kingdom, but we live in a natural world. And God expects you, really, to have dominion and to reign in life. He don't expect you to be conquered in life. He expects you to go forth and conquer. Church, I'm igniting you. you, may you I tell you what, whew, glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. In His name. In His name, He said you'd cast out demons. In His name. Praise God. You ain't a defeated church. You're a seated church. The devil don't want you to know who you are because when you get it, when you get it and you get that proper foundation under you, you're unstoppable in Christ. Amen. Are you hearing me? Ah, God. I feel that anointing. Thank you, Jesus. I tell you, if you knew what I took, it took to get me up here, I was on the altar. They was anointing me with oil and I... I mean, like, yeah, sickness, you got to go in Jesus' name. I'm not sick. I'm healed. <laughs> you hear me? You hear me? I said, Lord, you're going to have to help me. I've had to go back to the bathroom two or three times. I'm not complaining. I'm just telling you, we with it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I about put a trash can right here just in case. But I said, no, Lord's going to help me here. I know he is. Amen. He said, resist the devil. and He'll flee from you. This word right here, you are to write it down. Acts of obedience in faith. Faith with financial seed. Listen, in good soil. Now remember about the soil. The soil is just created to produce. Whatever you put in it, it's going to produce. That's why sometimes, I remember Pastor Luke Hobbs, he, when, I, when I was uh, underneath him in the ministry, I would, uh, he would say that. He would say, Lord, let me have a crop failure in these areas. The things that I have spoken, which would be the words, which would be the seeds that I've spoken. I'm fixing to take us a little deeper here because y'all still in the garden thinking about squash. You still thinking, it, ain't you? Be honest. I know y'all come from Baker Mountain. Y'all got squash out there or something, you know. Pastor, he talking about it. I'm ready to eat some fried squash too. And hey. But it's true, but he related that to the kingdom of God. Seed time and harvest. If you want kindness, sow kindness. If you, if, if you say, well, I don't have no friends, are you friendly? Are you friendly? I'm just saying all of us, well, I don't have no friends. Well, are you friendly? Are you friendly to people? Are you sowing friendship? Are you, are you a friend to people? Goodness? Are you good to people? Well, nobody loves me. Do you love anybody? We can all get there, but do you really love somebody? Do you really love somebody enough to sacrifice something for them? And we don't always make it about us or what I'm going to get. Or what it, see, I, I shifted too. I told Pastor Jody up there, I said, you know what? I, I got back there and I prayed. I said, I didn't come out here like what I want to get. I said, Lord, what does the people need? What, what are they, what's going to help them? You know, I had ten different directions. I'm like, Lord, this Holy Ghost, just give me the, 
How can I help them? When we start to live that way, a selfless life, man, the, the, it's, 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 it's unbelievable what God will do in your life. Right now what we're talking about is don't miss a harvest. And I want to say this about that job because I never shared on the other end of it. But this brother was there. Through the whole thing, there was nothing major that happened. One thing did major happen, but it, 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 I put gas in the, uh, in the well, hydraulic fluid. And, and my guys back here that, that deal with the big diesels and stuff, you know what Pastor did when I put gasoline I, I'm serious. I put it in there. I didn't know I put the whole thing in there until it was overflowed. Like, yeah, I got up there. It wouldn't start. I thought, man. That's right after you hit somebody's truck with it. Yeah, it was right after I hit a truck with it. <laughs> but it was old work truck, so we, 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 we'll, we'll yeah. leave that one there. <laughs> See, I forgot about that one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> so. <laughs> so it was sitting there. Thank you, thank you, brother. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for putting me out there. Ah! Love you, man. And so, so I put it in there, and I got out there and tried to start. It wouldn't start still. I thought, man, I just put a whole thing of gas in. I know it got gas in it. And uh, as I'm sitting there, man, it was like the Holy Ghost said, no, you need to call, call them. Luckily, I was in a place where I could at least hear, hear from the leadership of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I said, all right, oh, I'm going to go call. I'm going to listen here. So I go call, and I said, hey, I got this, you know. And Long story short, they was like, which one do you put it in? I told them, they said, that's the hydraulic fluid. I said, oh, man. But long story short, if I would have put it in, if that would have had gas in it and I would have started that and that would have run through, Mike, anybody that knows diesels, it would have probably messed up that whole thing, that, that, which I had insurance, but still, it would, have, it would have really tore up some stuff. It could have, the pump and everything. Luckily, it didn't. I listened, called, they come out, they drained it, they fixed it, got it up, cost me about 300 bucks, but it was no problem. But it didn't get tore up and everything like that. What I'm saying, there were some things that happened there, but what I want to get to on the other end is this, okay? That job turned into another job, another job, another job, another job, another job, another job. It kept producing. It kept coming. Why? I'm the blessed anyway. I'm not blessed because of me. I'm blessed because of Jesus. You're not blessed because of you. You're blessed because of Him. You're not righteous because of your own efforts. You're righteous because you've received Jesus Christ's righteousness. That's the only thing that makes us right with God is Jesus. Are you hearing me? When you're walking with God and you learn to mature and you get the right teachings and you learn how the kingdom of God operates, God will test you in these areas. See, He was wanting to release more of heaven. What was He wanting to do? Heaven's supply. Financial, are you here? Financial support. But it took me an act of obedience to unlock more of heaven's supply. What is heaven's supply? Well, it's anointing. It's, it's favor. It's increase. Are you hearing me? It's heaven's supply. When God puts his favor on you, I don't care what happens. When you walk in there, I've, I've, I've had this happen. Really, this is still unfolding. And I'm using that because I know it was an act of obedience with that $1,000 seed. I know it 100% because it was the act of obedience. It wasn't the $1,000. It was an act of obedience, but it was the seed into the right ground, which was my man of God. It had to produce because the ground produces what you put in it. Are you hearing me? When we get these principles, your life will forever change when you start to be obedient to what God's leading you to do. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, but right now you're getting a knowledge of the truth and how the kingdom works. Jesus is the king of kings in this kingdom. And he releases... The amounts of favor, financial provision, and all that. Now, now you can walk in seeking first the kingdom and just get the necessary things necessary to live. But if you're stepping out to start a business, or you're a, you're a Christian musician, or you're a preacher, or you whatever it may be, and you're you're needing to 
to, to see that thing prosper, well, then there's going to be some requirements of coming up and maturing yourself and being obedient to what God's leading you to do. You could stay a baby all your life, go to heaven, still on the thing. Or you could come up God's way, let discover your purpose, start being obedient in the things that He's leading you to do financially, spiritually, in every way, and you can conquer. Amen. You won't be needing your light bill paid. You'll be paying other people's light bills. You won't be out here begging, borrowing, stealing. And I'm not telling you to get it dishonest. God's not about dishonesty. He cares more about developing your heart, your character, and your integrity than He does anything else. And that's why a lot of Christians cannot walk in God's blessing like He wants them to. Because they can't handle it. Because their character will, will start to go away. Their, 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 their integrity, will start, they'll start to lose integrity and character. They'll start to steal and be dishonest. Because all these things and money... They can't handle it. So they stay a baby, begging for the, the necessary things. Not begging, but just... Right? I, I'm, I'm, I have a vision of a kingdom people, man. I have a vision of a, of a church that, that, that's anointed with power and demonstration. You can ask these brothers on this job, man. We're laying hands on everybody there, being able to preach. But I'm not there doing that. We're doing there focused on the job, doing the good quality of work, being honest, being on time, not being on our cell phones and robbing God of time, robbing our employers of time. We're working on character. We're working on building our lives. You know, we're working on building these guys' lives, teaching them how to submit, teaching them how to do this, teaching them how to work, teaching them a skill, and, 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 and all this. And then it just comes out. People come homeowners, and we're like, man, we're getting to witness to them. And I got to go preach at their church, and, and, and things like that happen. But we, I wasn't after that. We were building character. We were building integrity. We were trying to be honest and, and, and show that our hands were put to something. And when they seen the job, they'd be like, man, that's the cleanest job I've ever seen. When, I'll just tell you, when them guys left there, there ain't nothing on the ground. Every day I'd go oversee it. I'd walk on the job. Every day it'd, be, it'd look like you picked it completely clean. Every day. When I walk on a job like that, I'm like, I'm taking notice. There's something different about these guys. And they've said it to me two or three times. There's something working through you all that I don't see. Yep. Let me share it with you. The kingdom is advancing. God's wanting to advance it and expand your realm more. But then we get to those places and then we get this check and it's thousands of dollars. And he says, all right, take a thousand of it and sow it into your pastor, your man of God. Sow it into the church. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll take 50. I don't know about that thousand. I'll tell you what. Thousands. What do you mean? 50? He worked like we work. I'm telling you how people think. I'm telling you how, how carnal mentalities are. I'm telling you, I'm telling you a mentality that'll hurt you. God's saying, I'm your provider. Nobody else see it. This employer ain't your provider either. You're to work as unto the Lord. But I'm your Lord. I'm your provider, Jesus said. And he'll have no other gods before him. Well, what does that have to do with my employer? He said to be faithful to that employer. That's what Jesus told you to do in the New Testament. He told you to work as unto the Lord, not for men. Work with the perspective that I'm, I'm looking to heaven for heaven's supply and, and, and applause. And then there'll be those times you'll come and man, God will test your integrity. He'll test your character. He will test you in those ways. He won't tempt you with evil, but He'll test your character. He'll test your honesty. He'll test to see if you're going to be dishonest. And He might be the only one that knows it. See, there's a point. There's a gap here. Your destination, here's where you're at. You might not see the destination. You might know it. Yeah, it's heaven. We get that. But, but there's a place to get to and there's a place where you're at. Now there's all this in between that you got to... You can walk in God's supply and God's best or you can just walk your own way and come to church and exist and, and never accomplish anything. 
And when you get to heaven, Jesus is going to say, look what you could have did for me. But you wouldn't do it. Look what you could have did. Look how many souls that could have been saved, that could have been won. Look at the cities that could have been turned from darkness to light. Look at the factories that could have been changed from darkness to light. Look at the businesses or whatever it is. Look at, and he shows you and you're going to go, boom. Because again, it's not about you, it's about him. It's not about me, it's about him. It's not my will, but his will. This Christianity is not, I'll hold on to whatever I want to do, my dreams, my this, my that. No, it's die to your dreams. Die to yourself. Die to everything. Lay it down and say, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. That's what this Christianity is about. God said, I had bigger plans than you ever even thought of. What you're thinking of, I've got way pit exceeds a hundred times what you thought. Because his thoughts are way higher than our thoughts. His, his, his ways are way higher than our way. He sees the beginning from the end. He knows everything. I heard Apostle say that last night. He said a lot of these churches you go into, and he said they're talking about their dreams and all this. And he rebuked everybody. I mean, he's got a big stage. You know, he rebuked everybody. He's like, your dreams. He said, this ain't the cross that I picked up. He said the Christianity that we've got, he said it's about dying to yourself daily, picking up your cross, following Jesus Christ with everything that's within you. You lay down your life, you receive life. You hold on to your life, you lose it. That's real Christianity. Anything else is a false gospel, church. It's not the real gospel. It's not come in, get a little bit of Jesus and hold on to everything I want to do. It's laying everything down and dying. And saying, not my will, but your will be done. Just do something in me, Lord. You know you created me. And you love me. And you paid a price for me. Either way, I'll serve you. When you come to that place in your life, that's where you live. Where does that place stop at, Pastor? Never. Right, sister? Every day of my life, I have to get up and say, I die to me today. I came in here this morning because I was dead to me. If I would have been not dead to me, I would have been in the bed still probably. Because that's the way I felt. But again, not my will. It's your will, Lord. Man, I see why now, man. This is good revelation here. This is a good place. I'll, I'll bring it to a close because I want you all to get fed and I want you just to take a hold of this. We're talking about don't miss your harvest. And that unfolded, that unfolded, that unfolded. I'll share one other thing with you about harvest. Remember I've been declaring the last couple. I did this by faith. Okay, but I got a revelation. It come up in me. It wasn't just I heard somebody do it. Nothing wrong with hearing the right people do it and following the examples. But a revelation come up in me and I said, I command the money to come to me in Jesus' name. Now listen, church, I'm not after money, honey. I'm at, you understand what I'm saying? I'm after Jesus and I'm after the souls of man to see people saved and set free. Okay, but so when I say this, people's like, oh yeah. I said, money, I command you to come to me in the name of Jesus. I'm not chasing it. It's going to be chasing me. I mean, you, believe, you say what you, you know what I'm saying don't throw me out don't throw me out yet just hear me out y'all was here when I declared it right yesterday I had somebody walk up on my porch with I'll tell you this well over a thousand dollars said pastor I want to give this to you I said alright thank you don't miss your harvest that wasn't all mine there was some things that I had to do with it but what I'm saying some of it was but here, here, here's what I want to get to. Because it, it don't always come like that. Somebody called me and they said, Hey, could you meet us? And I've got some other guys that, that wants to work too. And I've I'm, I'm just got some things working. Had some setbacks. But you'll have that in life. you just got to keep going, church. You've got to learn to shift. You've got to learn to, you've got to, learn to just keep going and not quit and give up. Those of you that own businesses, you understand this very well. People, people get flaky. People are people, church. Okay? People are just people, okay? So you got people involved, it's flawed. you got people involved, it's not going to be perfect with all of us. So if I'm the lead and I'm, I'm doing this, I just gotta, we just got to keep going and make it happen if I feel God's leading me in that direction, right? Whether you go or whether you don't, whether you stay, whether you don't, God has to supply the people. God calls me and I was hesitant. I went and met him. 
and uh, it was an insurance deal, and uh, good, 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 good money in this, but as I'm sitting there, I'm praying because I've, I've got to focus more on the church because I'm a full-time pastor. I just do that on the side to keep these guys going and all that, and I make extra money there also. You understand what I'm saying to you? I'm blessed in many ways because he said he gave me power to create wealth. Okay? He gave me power to create it. If I'd step out and let him work, be obedient to what he's saying. Well, I, 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 I'm coming out of the thing, and I'm just... I'm just going over this picture of what it's going to take and how long. I'm like, man, that's good. I, I do all right there. And the Holy Ghost says this, put in the sickle. Ha. Huh. I thought about that. I've been declaring that to come. It came, but it, it's coming in the form of another job. That people are going to be able to be supplied work, and I'm going to be able to make 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 a good little bit to keep pastoring and doing what I do. Like I told my friend, he wants to come in. We're, we're talking about integrating. I said, my job is the preacher. I'm the preacher. I'm the pastor. Okay? Right now at the church stage we're at, I have to do what i got to do. But what I'm saying, this is my job. The more I can focus on my job, the better off you are. The more I can do this and not be out everywhere else, the more you're going to get something that's going to build your life, sustain you, the, the greater food, the greater revelation that you're going to be able to get. Do you see that? But the Lord said this, put in the sickle. What's that mean? The harvest has come. That harvest might come in a different form, but it'll be your harvest. Put it in and snatch that up. Are you hearing me? Is that helping anybody? Are y'all mad at me? You think I'm on money or something? Uh, guys, as a pastor, as a pastor, I'm going to tell you this. Those, uh, those people that attack money and stuff like that, I get what they're saying, the love of money, and you're not to. But why do I teach you? Because I'm required to. Because I want you to walk the way God said for you to walk. Amen. Amen. And to have what he says that you can have. And to be what he says that you can be. And where's that found at, Pastor? Right here in the Word of God. You can, go, you can go be trained up by the world, or you can learn to respond and do it God's way, and by faith, receive what God has for you. And, do, and accomplish His will. Because when you're in the place where He puts you, when you're in the place where He leads you, and you start responding, and He starts releasing more of heaven, heaven's in you, but He starts releasing more. What do I mean by releasing more? Why do I say release? Because coming from the inside out, but he's, he's releasing more. Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and with man. He grew. Jesus himself had to grow. You're going to have to grow. You're going to have to, and then when God releases, see, he releases more anointing. If he releases more anointing, that means there's more required of you. And there's more consequences if you fail. The more he gives, the more he reveals, the more that's required. Well, I want to do all this and all that. Okay, that's fine. You better be prepared to do it. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? It's not, oh, I got it. And then, so when he releases that, so sometimes that release from heaven is favor. Sometimes that release from heaven is is is. It is financial. That's the least part of it. But if you got favor and your name's good and you're running a business, business is going to be attractive to you. It's going to run you down and overtake you. And, and if you got the right name and the right favor, they'll pay you whatever. They'll pay the top dollar. You could be double the price of what they are and they don't care. They'll pay it because they want that cop quality. They want your name. They want what's on it because it's got some substance in it that nothing else does. I'm going to close right here in a minute. Now I'm on something right here. We walked into a Chinese restaurant up in East Tennessee when we was going up ministering at Soul Savages. And we went in there, and it was, as soon as I walked in, sister, I could see the food it looked different. You know, spiritually I could see something. There's something to There's some substance here to this food. What is this? We get done eating. Was it after we ate or before we ate that I talked to that guy? It was after. 
We ate the food, the best tasting food that I'd ever had. Brother, I, I mean, it had, it had substance to it, man. There was something to it. I thought, man, what is this? a Chinese restaurant. Most of them ain't Christians. You know, how's, this, how's God's hand on this? That's what I was thinking. Because, you know, when God's hand's on something, it's got substance to it. I'm feeding the clothes. So, I go, I go to the counter, and I look on the thing, and they got three different Christian tracks. In three different languages. I've never seen this as long as I've been alive in a Chinese restaurant. I said, hey, do you know Jesus? Oh, Jesus. He's my Lord. I love Jesus. I said, I know you do. I can tell. I can tell by the way your food tasted. Are you hearing me? I could tell by the substance, the, the, the way the food looked. I could tell by the way it tasted that the anointing of the Holy Ghost and God's hand was on it. I could tell it. And then that confirmed what I had already discerned. So they're in there spreading tracks and everything. Some of the best food I've ever ate in my life. We still go there when we go to that area, don't we? So anyway, I want to close with that. And I want to say this. Don't miss your harvest. If you've been sowing... You've been sowing financially. And the reason I'm talking about finances is because God's leading us into that area. It might be something we need to feed our faith in that area. If he, there's a lot of different as, uh, facets to the kingdom. There's, there's so many. There's healing. There's divine healing. There's prosperity. There's, there's all this that's wrapped up in the kingdom. But when he starts leading us in a vein, that means we need to feed our faith in this area because he wants you guys to come up and walk in his best. And walk in His ways, not apart from Him, but with Him. Declaring His Lordship over your life. His Lordship for your provision. Amen. Is anybody blessed today? Those of you online, I pray, hey, comment, talk to us. I know we're talking about don't miss your harvest. Something new that God's directed me to uh, minister in. But I pray that you've been fed with some knowledge today. And some nuggets today is what I pray that will really help you. Not only help you, but I pray that it challenges you. I pray that you're looking at me right now or whenever you watch this video and you are challenged to the core about some of the things that I said. And it puts you into your Bible and on your knees before God to find out. That's what I want. I want you to be challenged. Oh, that sounds crazy, you know. But don't throw it out yet. Right? Amen. Learn that. When you hear something, I'm going to tell you from experience, bad experiences and good. You hear something that just... Just don't make sense. I've never seen that. Don't throw it out yet. There's been things that I did like that, Chris, that they, they challenged me from a pulpit. I said, I ain't never seen that in the Word of God. I, I mean, I tell you what, I, man, I, I you know, about got mad. Look here, years later, listen, true story. Why is that? Because only God can unlock this thing. Yeah. Only, the, only the Holy Ghost can unlock His Word and, and reveal to you Himself. You read it a hundred times over and you might not see it. But all of a sudden you read that one time the Holy Ghost goes, and you're like, wow. So I get mad. I'm like, oh, I don't see that. That ain't doctrinal. Da, 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 da. And then years later I'm, I'm reading in there and all of a sudden the Holy Ghost reveals it and then he reminds me of what the preacher said. And I went, man, oh Lord, I repent. I'm so sorry. He didn't condemn me. But man, I'm so sorry. He was trying to take me into new territory spiritually, into new areas in the Word of God. He was trying to lead me into the light of it, but because it was unplowed ground, it was very uncomfortable for me because I had never heard it before. That's what unplowed, uncharted territory in the Spirit is and in the Word of God. You plow, some plow, you know, you plow, you got to plow the garden before you can plant the garden. So those new veins and areas, sometimes it'll challenge you and it'll, it'll be like there's... Nah. Anybody ever been there? Anybody ever been there here? Yeah? Amen. Well, that's a good thing. As long as I'm scriptural and it's in the Word of God. Right? If I'm not, then we, we, we can discount that. But if it's in the Word of God. But what I'm saying is if you hear that in the Word, you hear deeper revelation that just challenges you. Don't, don't, don't be quick to speak against it. And don't be quick to... Just some, just some FYI for you. Don't be quick to speak against it. Don't be quick to, to, to push it out. Be quick to get on your knees and say, Holy Ghost, I don't, I don't understand that, but show me. What, what is this? He said something that just really just challenged me.
and I need to know. So now I get with the Holy Ghost and I study to show myself approved unto God. And God's for you, church, who could be against you? He's preached and taught me for two hours, and I didn't think I'd be able to stand up here today. So to God be the glory. Give Him praise today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to close with that. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior, my wife put a video on there that i tell you what, it should go all over the world, the simplicity of that and the power of the Holy Ghost that was on that message. The power. If you, Man, i tell you what, the simplicity. We complicate things sometimes. But my wife, buddy, she, I'm telling you, so you want to invite Jesus into your heart and, make a, and start a new life with Him, you can invite Him in. And he will, he, he will come in and he'll do a work in you. And you'll start your walk. You'll start your life with him at that moment. And he loves you with an everlasting love. And we do too in Jesus' name. Amen.